we have a new a new foundation from L'Oreal. Actually, it's technically reformulated, but we have a new foundation from L'Oreal that we are going to be putting to the test today. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. We're doing a foundation wear test with the new L'Oreal Infallible 32 hour fresh wear foundation. Now I have worn the 24 hour version, but they reformulated, they reformulated. This now has vitamin C and an SPF of 25. And this actually launched over in Europe first, so it wasn't available in the US. And I started noticing after Pointy Click Vibes over on Instagram posted about a new formulation of this foundation, I kept my eye out at the drugstore and I finally found it at my local Walmart. I've been trying to do some research on this reformulation because it's really not being talked about a lot. I tried finding websites that actually are selling it and it's not really being sold a lot. So I feel like this is one of those things that kind of has flown like maybe under the radar or it really hasn't been like announced yet. So I wanted to do a wear test today. Now I did find a listing for it on the website caretobeauty.com. No idea where this website is from. Um, it looks like it might be an international website, but they do have information about the new 32 hour fresh wear with vitamin C in an SPF of 25. So it is the L'Oreal Infallible Foundation. It is one fluid ounce. It is a long wear waterproof foundation that is perfect for everyday use, which is interesting because it doesn't say waterproof on the bottle. A light, ultra breathable, and non comedomic formula. It is suitable for all skin tones. Also with a water and sweat resistant formula, the wear period is up to 32 hours of wear. And it says you can apply the foundation on a regular basis as it will last you all day. More than that, it does not transfer. So that's according to care2beauty.com. This actually doesn't really say that it's like waterproof or anything like that or water resistant. So that's interesting. We're going to use my go-to primer. If you guys haven't seen any of my like Foundation Friday videos, definitely go check that out because my Foundation Friday videos, they are an in-depth review of a whole bunch of different foundations, especially um, in 2023 when I started Foundation Friday. And so like definitely go check out that playlist after you watch this video, of course. So I'm just applying the Power Gripping Primer from e.l.f. This is a grip primer, and it also tends to moisturize my skin, and it really just clings very nicely to foundation, so it's not like it's going to disturb the makeup at all. I've never had problems with this foundation with every single foundation that I tried last year, and like every single foundation that I've worn since this came out. So the shade that I have is 415. No idea if this is a cool undertone. Like they, because I can't find shade information online, I have no idea if this is going to fit me or not. From the bottle, it looked like it was going to fit me. So we, we literally, I was not able to see if it was a neutral, cool, warm undertone. But 415 is the shade that I got. So I'm actually just going to put it on just so you guys know, like a really good test to see if it's going to match your skin tone is by putting it on your hand. This actually looks like it's a pretty decent match. So let's just, oh yeah, that's a good match. As I'm applying this, I'm just going to let you guys know about my skin, the type of weather that we are in right now, where I'm located, because that really does play a role in your foundation. So I am 35. I have some, as you guys can see, some like age spots here, like larger freckles. Um, I do deal with like really big like under eyes because I am a mom. I have two kids. I have some red spots. I do occasionally have some like spots of acne. I do have red around my nose. So when I'm looking for a foundation, I look for the way that it seeps into my nose because my nose tends to like not let foundation cling to it at all. And my skin is in the winter time, which is the season that I'm in right now. In the winter time, my skin is a little bit more dry. It is not very moisturized. So um, it's not as balanced as what it is like in the spring and fall months. My skin tends to absorb a liquid product a lot more. And so that's a good thing to keep in mind as well. And I am also a cool, fair 
undertone or a cool neutral undertone cool neutral fair I should say so what I mean by that is I have pink undertones in my skin I don't have yellow in my skin my skin is definitely a pink undertone it that's what I have and this actually I think is a this is either a neutral undertone or it's a pink undertone 415 so if you have a skin a lot like mine like um if you are shaded a lot like me where you have a neutral or a cool undertone shade 415 this is actually matching really well and it's going on like super super nicely so this is supposed to be transfer resistant and also waterproof but it's also a medium to buildable foundation which it did build up pretty nicely but i am still seeing like a, my my age spots there so it is more of a medium coverage. I have tried the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear one, which is like the original foundation. I did not like that one so much because it was just a little bit too drying on my skin. Now this one, because it has vitamin C in it, it's supposed to be a little bit more moisturizing. So I'm doing like a half a pump and we're going to see how this builds up on my under eyes. It does have a little bit of a scent as well, but it's like a fresh scent. It's not like an offensive scent. So like as I'm filming this, I actually have a slight headache and it's not bothering that. So that's a good thing. So if you are sensitive to scents, I don't, I'm typically sensitive to scents when I have like a, a, a headache, like I have a little tension headache going on right now, but I was like, I got to play with makeups and that might help me relax a little bit. So if you are sensitive to scents, this isn't really offensive at all. It's actually pretty like fresh and it, it dissipates really fast. So this is looking really pretty. It's a good shade match. It's covering nicely. It's clinging to the places that I want it to cling to, but not in a bad way. And it really isn't settling into any of my fine lines. It did really even my complexion. Oh, this is this is actually really pretty. And it doesn't look as drying as what the so the 24 hour looked really drying on my face. This actually is not looking really drying. And it's more of like a medium buildable, not quite full coverage because I can still see like some of my age spots here, but like that's really pretty. I want to see how this layers with my concealer. This is just the Tower 28 Serum Concealer. And I'm just going to apply it in areas that I typically get like a little bit more blue where I have blemishes. And then I also have some like age spots because like life. So we're just going to tap this in, see how it layers and like on my skin, but like overall, like so far, like this foundation is sitting really nicely on the skin. It's not like looking cakey or over texturized at all, which is really good. I mean, for somebody, I'm, I'm going to be 35 in a month, not even a month. And I need something that isn't going to texturize like my, like anything. I need to like have baby smooth skin. So I forgot to tell you guys how much this foundation is. It retails for $13.98 at Walmart. Um, so with tax, depending on what state you live in, I think it was like $15 total. So it's like a $15 foundation. It is oxidizing just a little bit, and you can see where it's oxidizing like around my forehead, which that was a problem that I had with the foundation before was that it oxidized the 24-hour one. So just keep that in mind that if you don't like the oxidization, which means that it will get a little bit darker as it sits on your skin, then you may not want to get like the same shade as your skin. You might want to get like a little bit lighter of a shade so that it oxidizes down to your actual shade. It's not like too terribly noticeable though. It, it was just along my hairline that I noticed it was oxidizing a little bit. First, we're going to go in with the Essence Brighten Up Banana Powder. We're going to see how this layers as well. I want to see how this layers with the Brighten Up Banana Powder just on my under eyes so we don't get a lot of creasing because I'm actually going to take a piece of paper towel and we're going to like press it onto my, my cheek real quick. The claim is that this is transfer proof so we just have a clean piece of paper towel and we're not going to dab like before we set this I want to see if it's transfer proof. Okay so you guys just saw there's nothing on that side mm, just a little bit like right here but it's not like so my nose is usually where I have problems. So, okay, well, that didn't transfer either. That's good. Let's do one more. And I don't see anything on there either. So, before we put on the powder, 
on the places where I didn't put powder, it is it is transfer proof. It did not transfer onto the paper towel at all. Um, only one spot lifted just like a teeny tiny little bit. And I used the Brighten Up Banana Powder just to brighten where I need it to be brightened. I'm going to do a light dusting with the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Setting Powder. I just use this like stippling dual fiber brush and just like lightly go over everything and this will set it down too. Let's see how it looks after we put all the powder on. Still really pretty, not texturized at all. Look at that, so pretty. And if this is supposed to be waterproof, technically with me spraying like setting spray on it, it shouldn't move. Okay, let's go in with a little bit of L'Oreal Infallible Bronzer, just because like, why not? We're gonna use the primer infused blush from e.l.f. Just lightly dust this on. This is kind of just a mauve pink color. It kind of reminds me of the Tarte Amazonian Clay. Like that, that blush that went viral a while ago. It's just a very like neutral pink. Not very poppy, not very peachy. It's just like a neutral. Just dust a little bit of my Milani Luminoso blush on top because I want some like sun-kissed. And then for highlight, I'm just going to use, this is the Makeup Revolution, like, Beam Bright Highlight. I think the shade I have is Diamond Glow. So no problems around my nose so far. It's, like, it's staying pretty well. It's not texturizing at all. It's not settling into any of my, like, finer lines up here. It did cover my one blemish that I have, and it looks really nice. It's playing well with the, like, all the other face products really well. Like, I think this just looks so... Like, it looks airbrushed. Like, it's really airbrushed looking. I'm, like, this is really pretty. I'm just gonna dust on some shadows real quick because that's my life right now. So, this is what the face is looking like. Um, I have been filming for 26 minutes. So, 26 minutes of foundation application. It layered really nicely with all of the face products that I have on. I actually got a little bit of, like, mascara and had to, like, wipe it away. And actually, the foundation didn't really wipe away, which is good. And so, like, if you accidentally mess up your mascara and you have to use your damp beauty blender to, like, erase it, it, it stayed on pretty good. So that's, that's a good test, I would say. But overall, like, the face looks beautiful. There's no, like, over-accentuation of pores. So it is settling into the under eyes just a little bit. And that could also be my concealer. I typically don't find that I have, like, a lot of problems with that, though. So, um, it could be also the foundation. So we're just going to lightly press my foundation, my setting powder in, just lightly, lightly, lightly. So overall, like it did settle in a little bit, but you know, repressing and actually just like pressing it in instead of using the brush, that might be what is going to like help it. But this is supposed to last for 32 hours. It is currently 9.52 in the morning. 9.52 in the morning. So we're going to put this through the ringer. We're going to do a wear test with this. We're going to see how it wears throughout the day. It's supposed to last 32 hours. It is supposed to be transfer resistant, waterproof slash water resistant. So we did do like the transfer proof test before we set it down with all the powder. Powders are not really transfer resistant, but the foundation definitely held up to like that transfer resistant like feel. So I'm wondering if like next time I could just like put that on, not put on any like setting powders, but it did settle into my fine lines a little bit under my eyes. So that's what we're, that's, that's, this is what the face looks like after about 30 minutes of application sitting here under studio lighting. So I am going to go about my day. We're going to do a wear test. We're going to put it to the test and I will do periodic check-ins with you guys. Okay guys. Hi. Hello. It's 12.56 in the afternoon, so it has been a couple of hours since I, like, this is my first official check-in. So, I drank some coffee, that's about it. Um, I'm going home because it's one of those days I'm going to go lay down. So, we will see how this holds up to me taking a nap, because, yeah. Okay, guys, 
We are on, my hair is just like not hair in today. So please ignore the hair. It's kind of cute and up and I was feeling kind of springy today. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. So guys, I am on day number three. This is day number three of trying out the L'Oreal Infallible 32 hour fresh wear foundation. So yesterday, if you guys, I'll do a little bit of a rundown on yesterday. I didn't really, I didn't film any of the wear tests, but I did try. We got to talk about this real quick. So I actually was able to find the 32 hour fresh wear foundation on Amazon. And I was like, okay, I have to try it. And I was honestly thinking that this, this, this one would get to me before the one that I found in store. I honestly was under the impression that I wasn't going to be able to find one in store. And I was able to find one in store. And this one's actually my shade. Number 415 is my shade. I was actually able to find, like I said, the for reformulation on Amazon select shades. It is the reformulation. If you notice, like the packaging is 100%. Like these are different. These are different packages, but they're the same. They are the same product. The 32 hour fresh wear, this is in shade 415. The one that I got from Amazon actually is like, I guess it's the version that they've been selling in France. That's the only thing I can think because it has the foundation fondetiant. I'm horrible at, at French, but basically, a lot of the things on this specific, like, on this packaging, the shade is different. It's 120 vanilla, so it doesn't go from 400 to like 490 or something, like what the American version does. And then it's also in milliliters instead of, it's in milliliters instead of lift, listing ounces. But then also the barcodes on the back are different too. So I definitely have like a different, a different package of this too versus the new one. So like is one American packaging? Is one like French packaging? I don't know. But I did try the 120 vanilla golden because it's it's definitely a different package and a different like I don't know if the shade range is even the same. So I tried this one yesterday way too yellow on my skin, but it literally applied the same. I did put a little bit of this over the top because it was just way too yellow for me. And so I kind of mixed the two yesterday, did a full day wear test. It actually wore down really, really well. I put it on today and we're wearing just the one that I got from my local Walmart, the one that we wore in the first day of wear tests. And I literally just applied it like I normally would. I actually put on a different primer today. It was the Banana Pro Base Blurring Primer. So it was more of a moisturizing primer. So I wanted to see how it would wear down with like more of a moisturizing primer instead of a grippy primer. Conclude how my wear test went the first day. Honestly, it was like a powder dry down. It didn't wear down funny. It actually didn't separate. It didn't look cakey or crusty at the end of the night. And that was one thing that I had experienced with the original formula is that it dried down really weird. It didn't really necessarily separate on my face, but it definitely looked a little bit cakey by the end of the night. And with this formula, I've not noticed that with dry down time. It actually looks decently good by the end of the night. Like I would feel confident after wearing this for like six, seven hours to sit down and film like a YouTube video because my face did not look like it had been through like eight hours of wear. So the first night I actually had a 12 hour wear test day. I actually ended up concluding the night with a huge migraine and was not able to do um, a, a check-in at the end of the night. I've shared through this video the wear test and like how it were throughout the day, but I wanted to give you guys a little bit of update on that. I had a migraine that night, so like doing a check-in, a final check-in of the night was just not happening. So today we're doing um, wear test number three with more of a moisturizing primer. I did use the number 415. This one is the one that I got from my local Walmart. And again, it's, it's the same foundation, but we're doing wear test day number three. I'll go about my day. We will do a little bit of a wear test today on day number three and we'll talk about what I think at the end of the night and give you guys like my final thoughts after doing three days of wear and just like really taking in this foundation and giving you guys like a really good breakdown of it but so far after two days of wear it has not worn down funny ever it's usually just like a really beautiful powder dry finish my face still looks like it looks airbrushed like it looks so nice. It doesn't like settle into any of my like around my nose or anything. Like it looks so beautiful today. Now with today's makeup, I did not use any kind of concealer like I did on the first day. So like I feel like 
The wear is going to be a little bit different because I did not put on concealer today. I was just like, we're going to do a no concealer day because we have very blue under, like blue mask, like we have a blue eyeshadow going and I forgot to put on concealer. But some days I do that. Sometimes, sometimes I don't wear concealer because I use powder and I use brightening powder. So like I don't really need it. So today is a no concealer day. I wanted to see how it looked with that. But overall, like I've had this on for, I want to say like 40 minutes now as I've been filming another video, which will be up soon. But it looks pretty. It looks airbrushed. It is definitely drying down really, really nicely and it looks beautiful. So we're going to go about the day for day to day number three. And then we will conclude at the end of the night with my final thoughts overall over the three days that I have been wearing this product. So thank you guys if you've made it so far, but let's go through the wear test. Um, it is currently, it's 1010. Yes, that's Braxton. It's 1010. 1010 in the morning and we will go throughout the day and we will do another wear test with this product. Okay. So I'm doing an official kind of first check-in, maybe second check-in, second check-in of day three. Um, I just put some super shock shadow on my eyes because I was like, yeah, it was the something from the ColourPop Hocus Pocus collection. And I was like, I need to put this on because it's pretty. Anyway, so, um, this is, it's 2.35 in the afternoon. So 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. I've been wearing this for a little over four hours now. And I just wanted to give you guys some thoughts about what's going on with my makeup. My nose feels like super, super, super like oily. Definitely noticing oxidization. This like oxidized so bad. And the powders that I have in particular, they're ones that I use all the time and I never have oxidization issues at all. Like it always brightens my under eyes. And I can just see where this product has oxidized on my face, like around my eyebrows. It's oxidized in here. It's oxidized around my lips. And it's looking a little like worse for wear and I've only been wearing this for four hours so like on camera it looks really pretty but I feel like in person it feels a little cakey especially like in here and in here and it feels very texturized right underneath my eyes and I did not put concealer on today because I knew I knew like I just wanted to try it without the concealer um, my cheeks are fine. They're feeling more dried down, but I feel like it's lifting. It's lifting like when I touch my face and this is supposed to be a transfer proof makeup and it's definitely not. So overall, like I'm not very impressed with this wear test at all. So I'm thinking that the gripping primer, it does work a little bit better with not sitting well with me at all. Um, like it looks pretty, but it definitely oxidized like a lot. And I had that problem last time with this foundation. So that's one that's that's the big thing that's bothering me is the fact that it oxidized like so 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 bad. Also as a side note, I'm pretty sure the cake liner that I put on is bleeding all over my face, which is just awesome. But yeah, that's how the wear test is going. We're 4 hours in, it's oxidizing like crazy. So I mean, we're going to give it a little bit longer and we'll see how it lasts throughout the day. But right now I'm just kind of like me. Like I don't think it likes the primer that I chose today. I just put my kids to bed. So we're going to hold my microphone up. That way I don't have to talk really loud. It's seven o'clock at night. And I know that we put this on at 10 o'clock in the morning, but that is literally nine hours of wearing this foundation. And the only reason why I'm going to be wiping it off early is because one, something has been like, bleeding on my face if that makes sense like it's like a brown pigment and I think I'm pretty positive it's like the cake liner or something because that's like the only brown thing on my face that it could possibly be so keep that in mind um and it's literally just been like pigmenting all over my face like all afternoon it's the weirdest thing ever and I didn't have this problem with the black cake liner. So I'm thinking it's only the, it might possibly be just the brown cake liner from Trizlu's Beauty that does this. Cause it, yeah, cause like I just scraped a little bit of it and it's the same pigment that's like randomly like splotching all over my face. Like it looks like I'm bleeding. 
but I'm not. So let's just talk about the foundation. Um, when we did our two o'clock check-in, I did mention that it was definitely oxidized and it's, I still hold true to that statement. Um, this is only after nine hours of wear and I have done some other wear tests and obviously this is the third day of wearing it. Um, but okay, so after today's test and using a different primer than what I typically do, this is what I am seeing. Um, it definitely oxidized around my lips, like I said, but it also looks like it wore down really funny around my lips as well. And it's very splotchy, like right here for some reason, almost like it's separated. And like the cheeks look fine. The nose, it's definitely settling into a lot of my pores right here. And that's not cool. Um, my forehead still looks pretty good. It doesn't feel like oily at all. But like I said earlier, like my nose just randomly felt like really oily, which was really weird because I typically don't get that unless it's like a, some foundations do that to me. And I guess this one does, especially with the type of primer that I used today. So it could be the primer that I used. Um, so it oxidized, settled into a lot of my pores around my nose and made me feel oily. And it really settled funny around my mouth after like wear and eating. Like I don't expect it to be like glamorous and beautiful, but when it looks a little separated and cakey, I don't like that. And then I did not put on any type of concealer because I just wanted to see how it worked with just setting powder and it did settle into a lot of my fine lines under here and they look very dry. So I'm thinking it just didn't like the primer because when I did my initial wear with the power gripping primer from e.l.f. it looked a lot better at the end of the day not and I didn't get that like weird oiliness around my nose so I definitely think the power gripping primer is like the primer to go with if I'm going to choose a primer to wear with this foundation final thoughts after three days of wear I think it's an okay foundation I think the price point is a little bit steep it's like $14.99 for the foundation, I've actually had other foundations that have worn better over time, like the Maybelline uh, Super Stay Active Wear Foundation. I've worn that for like 12 plus hours with the primer that I used today and with the Power Gripping Primer from e.l.f. Never had an issue with getting like oily around in here. So in future, if I'm going to wear this foundation then it's going to need to be with the power gripping primer or maybe even a pore filling primer like the moisturizing primers just do not work with it I just don't think that they do and it might be because it has that vitamin c in it and that like skincare that could be why um it's not a terrible foundation is it one of my favorites I don't think so like it's 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 okay I do like the way that my skin looks right after I put it on. It looks very airbrushed and like very flawless. And I do like that concept. But every single time that I have applied it, I have used a beauty blender. And typically a beauty blender will pick up excess product. So like I'm not getting as full of a coverage as I would with a with a brush. But I'm also not putting as much product on my face. So I can only imagine what this would be like if I tried it with a brush. And I'm kind of curious. I should have done a wear test with the brush, but that's okay. I mean, you live and you learn, right? So overall, though, it's not a terrible foundation. I think if you have a combination skin, it might work for you. I typically have more on dry skin, and I still got, like, very oily with the moisturizing primer that I used today. So... <laughs> I think this is a type of foundation that would work really well on somebody who has really dry skin because it is very moisturizing. It does look glowy. It looks dewy. It looks airbrushed. Definitely use a power gripping primer or even a um, like pore filling primer. Don't use like a moisturizing primer. I don't think that like especially with my skin, it just did not sit well. But overall, like it's not a terrible foundation. After nine hours of wear, it looks okay. And it does look a little cakey in places, but I like the finish. I like, I love the, like, I love the way it looks when it's like first done. Like it's just so airbrushed and pretty. I think the way it wears down is kind of typical of the day, but I really feel like four hours in, it was like really cakey looking. Definitely it needs a power gripping primer or a pore filling primer 
no moisturizing primer at all. It just doesn't work with this, with this for my skin in particular. And I just don't think the foundation works very well with it at all. Um, definitely, if you're using like a moisturizing primer and you have dry skin, it's definitely going to make it feel oily. Especially with like if you're my age and you have the same type of skin as me, <laughs> be prepared for that. Um, would I recommend that you purchase this? Honestly, there's other foundations on the market that are way better than this. Like I said, the Superstay 30 Hour Active Wear Foundation. That foundation is so good. And I do have a foundation Friday of that video as well, of, of that foundation. And it is so good. I would definitely recommend that one hands down over the L'Oreal Infallible. Like, it's pretty. It's pretty. But, like, it's $15 and there's other drugstore foundations that perform way better, that look better on my skin at the end of the day, that don't make me feel super oily and that don't oxidize. That's a big thing. I don't like when it oxidizes. If I could give it a star rating, I'd probably give it like a three out of five because it's not terrible, but it doesn't have the longevity with the moisturizing primer. With the power gripping primer, it did last a little bit longer and it wore a little bit better, and that's why it's about a three star. I'm going to continue to wear it, and I'll give you guys more thoughts after, you know, wearing it with power gripping primer a little bit more, but right now I'm giving it a three out of five because it just, I don't know. It just, it didn't wear down well today, like at all. Thank you guys so much for watching and staying tuned to the end. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Leave me any comments that you have down below and I hope I get to see you in my next foundation video or any other video, really. Bye.